Today, we are discussing a critical topic in distributed systems, isolation levels. Whether you are shopping online, watching a movie, or using your favorite app, a lot is happening in the background to keep everything smooth. In distributed systems, many things can go wrong. And understanding isolation levels will help you manage those challenges. Hi there, welcome to Tech and Career Bites. I'm a software professional with over two decades of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product-based organization. In distributed systems, many things can go wrong. Some common challenges include the database or hardware can fail any time, even during a ride. Applications might crash mid-operation. Network issues can cut off the application from the database or isolate database nodes from each other. Multiple clients might write to the database simultaneously, potentially overwriting each other's changes. These conditions between clients can lead to unexpected bugs. So, to avoid complete chaos, in situations like these, we have transactions. Transactions let us group a series of actions like reads and writes into a single unit. Either all of them happen or none of them do. Transactions make sure that even if something fails halfway, our system does not end up in a strange broken state. But here is the thing. Transactions are not always the best choice. They can add extra steps, slow things down, and add complexity in distributed systems. Sometimes, relaxing or even skipping transaction guarantees like automaticity, consistency, isolation, and durability can actually improve performance and availability. This is often essential for maintaining responsiveness in high concurrency systems. To keep things efficient and still safe, we turn to isolation levels. Isolation level determines the degree to which a transaction must be isolated from other concurrent transactions. Think of it like setting up boundaries, not too strict, but just right for our needs. Isolation levels help balance consistency and performance. Depending on how strictly a database should protect each transaction from the effects of others running simultaneously. Why do these levels matter so much? Without the right isolation, you can end up with problems like dirty reads, reading uncommitted data that might later be rolled back, non repeatable reads, rereading data and getting different values if something is updated in the meantime, phantom reads. Finding different rows in the result set when rereading data after another transaction has added or removed rows. Imagine you have an inventory count for a popular product on Amazon stored in a distributed database. Two simultaneous customer purchases are trying to update the stock account as they buy the item. Here is how it might unfold without proper isolation. The stock for this product is 10. Customer A's request reads the current stock account, which is 10. Almost simultaneously, customer B's request also reads the stock count as 10. Customer A buys one item. So, their request decrements the stock by 1 and updates the count to 9. Customer B also buys one item. However, since customer B's request originally read the count as 10, it also decrements from 10 to 9, overwriting the count set by customer A. After both updates, the stock count shows 9 instead of 8. Due to race conditions, one of the decrement operations was lost, resulting in an inaccurate stock count. This could mean that Amazon displays incorrect availability or oversells the product. Isolation levels range from Lower isolation levels to higher isolation levels. Lower isolation levels allow more concurrency but with fewer consistency guarantees. And higher isolation levels ensure consistency at the cost of performance. Let's break down the four main isolation levels with some real world examples. First up, let's
let's talk about the read uncommitted isolation level, the lowest level of isolation. In a distributed setup, read uncommitted allows nodes to access data that has not yet been fully committed by other transactions. So even if a write has not propagated across all nodes, other transactions can still read it. This can lead to inconsistencies or dirty reads, where data might change or even be rolled back after it is read. While risky, read uncommitted can speed up transactions since it avoids waiting for full data synchronization. Consider a distributed e-commerce system with multiple data centers worldwide. A stock account update in one data center may not sync with others immediately. If another data center reads this uncommitted stock value, it risks incorrect availability information for users globally. Many distributed databases like Cassandra don't offer traditional transaction isolation levels, but allow you to simulate it with low consistency levels like one. Read uncommitted isolation level is perfect for situations where speed matters more than accuracy, such as social media metrics or streaming views where performance is critical and slight data inconsistencies are tolerable. Real-time analytics or scenarios where performance is critical and minor inconsistencies are acceptable. Next, we have got read committed. With read committed in distributed systems, only committed data is visible to other nodes, preventing dirty reads. However, non-repeatable reads are still possible because updates might not instantly synchronize across all nodes. In a distributed banking system, a customer's account balance checked at one branch may not immediately reflect the deposits made at another branch due to network latency. This setup prevents reading uncommitted balances but can lead to inconsistent reads across branches. Using a higher consistency level in a distributed database like Quorum can help simulate this behavior. Read committed is often used in systems like e-commerce, where a little inconsistency is okay, but we definitely don't want dirty reads. Now, repeatable read adds another layer of protection. Repeatable read ensures that if a transaction reads a value, it will see the same value if it reads it again, even if other transactions modify it. This prevents dirty and non-repeatable reads, but allows phantom reads. In a distributed setup, this can involve temporarily locking data or taking a snapshot of it during the transaction. However, phantom reads can still occur due to delays between nodes. Imagine an inventory system across multiple warehouses. If a transaction at one location reaches the inventory for analysis, it will continue to see the same stock levels even if other locations update their stock during the transaction. However, new products added during this period may not reflect immediately. Here is the code snippet that sets the transaction mode to repeatable read. Repeatable reads is suitable for financial systems where data accuracy is important within a transaction, like holding account balances stable. And now we are at the strictest level, serializable. Here, transactions look like they are happening one after the other. This is perfect for high stakes situations where accuracy is non negotiable, as it prevents dirty non-repeatable and phantom reads. Often, databases use protocols like two-phase commit or pack source to achieve this level, though it is costly in terms of performance. In a distributed auction system, where multiple bidders participate from different regions, only one person should win each item. The serializable level ensures transactions are processed sequentially, making sure only one winner is recorded per item regardless of latency or node separation. Distributed databases like CockroachDB use serializable snapshot isolation 
to enforce this level. This isolation level is suitable for systems requiring strong consistency and accuracy, like cross-region fund transfers or reservation systems for limited resources. Also used in systems where accuracy is critical, such as financial systems with high stakes transactions. Here is a quick comparison of various isolation levels. So, as you can see, each level brings different trade-offs between speed and consistency. By choosing the right isolation level, we make sure the system meets its goals, whether that is faster performance or strict accuracy. Wondering how to choose the right isolation level for your application? Let's discuss that. Distributed systems need to account for node failures, network partitions and latency while maintaining consistency. This makes isolation levels more complex to manage than in centralized systems. Lower isolation levels allow faster transaction processing but increase the risk of anomalies. In contrast, higher isolation levels ensure data integrity at the cost of slower performance. Typically, business critical applications like banking often require serializable, while e commerce or analytics can manage with read committed for improved performance. Each isolation level has trade offs in terms of consistency and performance. By selecting the appropriate isolation level, applications can meet their consistency requirements without sacrificing too much performance. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting tech topics. Do check out our other videos on software performance optimization case studies, coding, system design, big data and career growth. My name is Rupa and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.